Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you this morning, Lord, I just thank you this morning for the privilege and opportunity that we have to come into your house this morning to worship you in song, Lord, to hear your word proclaimed, to fellowship with other Christian believers. Lord, I just thank you for each and every blessing that you send their way. And Lord, I pray this morning that as we come, that we might hear your word, that we might uh, understand it better as is preached to us this morning. I pray this morning for the vacation Bible school this coming week, that you would just be with the workers, Lord, that they might be able to uh, share with the children there your word, that they might be able to encourage them to become believers and to accept you as their personal saviors this week goes on. God, I pray this morning for our service again, that you might be with our military, that each and every one of them, wherever they're at, that you might protect them, that they obtain any account for our freedom. And you know, we just thank you again for this country that we live in, and the privileges that we have that we take for granted each day, that you might just help us to open our eyes and see where we need to Stand up for you. Lord, I ask again that you might just forgive me for my sins and my shortcomings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's so good to see all of y'all. I didn't drown myself or anything at all like that. You go on vacation and some of the adventurous things you do, you know, it's like, why am I doing this? I'm 60. Well, give me my tube. I'm going anyway. And you just do that, you know. We had a good trip. Thank God for always getting back home to y'all. Uh, that's always a blessing. Uh, how many of y'all are, are familiar with uh, an organization that has been working with military groups of people for literally, well, decades and decades and decades called the USO? Anybody? All right, look around and see those hands. The USO, the United Service Organizations. Uh, is a, uh, a group that has provided help, encouragement, support, entertainment, that sort of thing for our military and has done that for the longest time. Uh, I know that uh, for a long time there, uh, you would see people like Bob Hope and folks like that that were going almost to the front lines, as it were, uh, to provide entertainment, whether that was in World War II, Vietnam War, didn't matter, these entertainers would go and do that kind of work. But a lot of people forget about the USO that, that I got to see really and realize for the first time uh, some years ago uh, in the movie It's a Wonderful Life, which is all of these people from town that would meet the troop trains and hand out donuts and coffee and try to make sure they could find their way around town and just did the basic things. So I, the Lord put it on my heart to, today to get you to think in terms of the local church being sort of like the USO, but much, much further. It's not just an organization just like the USO is not, just an organization for entertainment. But there's a, a factor involved here in here's a person who's on their way to war, may actually be at war and is been given the opportunity to come back from the front long enough to be able to have a, a, a relaxation, a little bit of a break, to have a, a distraction from the battle. And as you think about that, the church is, is has become an entertainment thing for a lot of people. I just go to church on Sunday morning and it makes me feel better and then I just go about my business. Well, 
You know, the church is more than that. It is a haven of rest and is a place for equipping. But we have to remember that as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're in the midst of a battle. Now, some of the things that are going on right now that we don't particularly care for, Supreme Court decisions and things that are going on, these are reflective of a spiritual battle that we're a part of. God chose you and He chose me to be a part of this generation that would face these challenges. Now, as you think about Bible school this week, I don't know if you've noticed the Everett report over here. Uh, those in the back, you can't read at the bottom. It says, conquering challenges with God's mighty power. And so as you think about the fact that this is what we're talking to children about, how about those of us as adults who now are looking at challenges that are far beyond anything that we would have expected we might face, and now we're being called to conquer in these challenges by God's mighty power, not by our own. And so I want to encourage you today, and here's our encouraging verse, Hebrews 10, 23. And you've seen this verse before, uh, and we don't have to go into it too deeply because uh, we've taught and we've preached and we've gone through this material together. And, and by the way, sorry about these little signs. They're very important to Bible school. You'll just have to look over and under to get all of that. But you see that the holding fast the confession of our hope without wavering, why would that be important today? Because there are people who are trying to give up, get us to give up on the confession of our hope. Uh, the Right Way Prison Ministry folks, if you're working with Right Way here, would you raise your hands up? Thank you very much. I got a sheet on my desk that, that was from the Right Way Prison Ministry group. And it was, I had a, a quote from a guy from ACT UP, which is one of the LGBT organizations. Is this thing working when I'm away? So I have to stay here. Okay, what's wrong with it? TJ says we don't know. Okay, so stay here. All right. This particular organization was writing to the churches that are supportive of their work and saying, you tell all the old people in your congregations that they are no longer allowed to be homophobic and not to be supportive of all these values. And so they're basically, the call was for church discipline against people in these congregations that were not accepting of the gay and lesbian agenda. Now, whoever thought that we would find ourselves there, but that's where we are today. So don't give up on the confession of your hope. Don't waver on what you believe, what you know the scripture teaches. Because why? Because God is faithful. He's going to be with us. He's going to help us. He's going to direct us. And that doesn't mean we won't suffer as a result of a biblical worldview. We're, we're going to suffer as a result of a biblical worldview. It's called persecution. Jesus said if you're not persecuted, then maybe you're not really in the faith. And so we, we know that these things are true. So what are we going to do? Well, verse 24 just tells us. Uh, let's consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to encourage each other to live a biblical worldview, to understand those truths, to love the people that we disagree with enough to hang with them, to try to teach and, and, and direct and help them to understand biblical worldview so that the Spirit of God can take that in their hearts and maybe even use it to bring them around to faith in Christ. That we don't know how God's going to do it, but we have to help each other. So as I'm doing that, you're doing that for me, we know that that's going to happen if we get together to do that work of stimulating. I, I was having a conversation with Dan, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago. And we were talking about some of the things that we do around here and so the kind of conversation went along, it was sort of like, so a lot of the things we're doing, we really just are kind of doing them because if we think if we don't do them, people won't learn and be involved in that sort of thing. They won't get involved in that process. And, and, I, and I was like, yeah, Dan, I, you know, I guess that's true. That's how I perceive that, that, that 
really this idea of stimulating each other to love and good deeds requires that we get together and that we raise up a, a biblical agenda, that we evaluate ourselves in light of it in terms of whether or not I'm, I'm serving the Lord in a way that just shows my devotion to Him and, and that I believe what, he, what matters to Him matters to me. And so we can't accomplish this if we forsake our assembly. And notice that it says that that's a habit uh, that we get into. Uh, have you ever gotten into the habit of not doing something that you ought to do? Uh, every one of us, you know.